Today we will be talking about indoor seed starting. It's a great way to jump start the season so that plants spend more time in the ground producing. Um, one gets a greater selection of varieties that are available in nurseries and we have healthy hardy plants ready for the warm season. So most plants um, will become transplant size in four to ten weeks. You can use a variety of different pots and trays to start your plants. Here we have a tray. You can also use the individual cells here. Um, other options are milk, milk cartons or the bottom of uh, gallon containers. You just want to make sure to poke holes in the bottom so it drains properly. Um, pots, anything that you plant in should be, should be cleaned completely before you start the plants to prevent a lot of the diseases from spreading. It's important to remember that when you start seeds that if they are in smaller containers then they might need to be transplanted into bigger containers. Um, and that should be done when the plant gets its second set of leaves. Very important what kind of soil you choose to start your seeds in. And let me be clear, you're actually not looking for soil from your garden. You don't want to go outside and get some soil. You want to make your own potting mix or purchase potting mix at a nursery. The difference with potting mix is it, ha it has this light, light textured, airy feeling to it, and it has moisture retaining qualities that normal soil often doesn't have. And this is really important for your seeds to get access to water when they're growing. So here we have a, a potting, potting mix and it has in it instead of um, peat moss which many potting mixes have it has coconut fiber in it. We are currently recommending coconut fiber instead of peat moss because it has the same qualities moisture retention but peat moss mining peat moss is very difficult environmentally on the peat bogs. This is what coconut fiber looks like in a block it's very hard but as you add water to it it loosens up into a very kind of a pretty fine fiber that you can add to a soil. So I'm going to talk now about how to make your own mix, potting mix. The recipe for this is four parts compost. If you purchase a compost that has large pieces, you need to put it through a sieve to remove these large pieces. Two parts coconut fiber, and you can usually purchase coconut fiber at a nursery. You can also order it online. One part perlite one part vermiculite, and perlite and vermiculite are commonly available at most nurseries. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to plant your seeds. The first thing you need to do is dampen your soil. You don't want it sloppy wet, you want it damp, but it's good to do it in a bowl because you can dampen it, turn it over, dampen it. So now I'm going to demonstrate planting your seeds. You want to have your medium, your potting mix, pretty flat. You don't want it compacted, but you want it flat. Again, you might want to choose to mo moisten it. If you're using a large tray like this one, you can take something like a ruler and make create indentations for your seeds to go into, taking into account how deep your particular seeds okay. like to be planted. The other option is to Fill individual cells with soil. You want to fill them about three quarters of the way full. Again, sort of pack them down with your fingers and dampen them if you feel they need more moisture. You can also fill a container such as this one, which will have a top, which will help seeds germinate. I'm planting broccoli seeds. You make small indentations, place your seeds and cover it with soil. Once your seeds are planted, you moisten them again. And then a good idea is to cover them with plastic. The purpose of this is just to aid with germination. Until the seed comes above the soil, you can leave the plastic on. Once you see the little seedling, you need to remove the plastic. Do not place this in a hot area. Do not place it in a direct sun in a, sun, in a windowsill. Do not place it under hot lights because it really could damage the seed at this point. It, most, it doesn't need any additional light until the seed has come above the soil level. Okay, we're here to show you our seeding area. We have a fluorescent light uh, with two bulbs at least recommended. Um, this light is on adjustable straps so that we can raise and lower it. We'll raise it as the plants come up and, and get larger. So we have it underneath the table. You could put this in, in shelving or anywhere where you can hang a light above your, above your seedlings. And if you're going out to purchase a fluorescent light, 
look for something that's T8 or T5. We can, we can adjust the height of the light above the seedlings. Uh, right now we're at four inches and that's what's recommended. Um, as the plants get larger, we're able to raise this, this light upwards because of the adjustable straps. Most seeds will germinate in 65 to 75 degree soil. Some seeds like your brassicas, cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower, or peas, like to germinate in cooler soil around 55 degrees. Most plants grow best at 70 degrees in the day and 60 degrees at night, but check your individual plant's requirements. If your seedlings are in an especially cold room, you can use a heat mat underneath them to warm their environment. When you're watering, you want to use a light spray. You could use a spray bottle and you want to keep the soil moist as your seedlings come up, as your seedlings are getting started before they come up. Um, once they're up, the soil can be slightly dry, but you want to keep moisture around the root zone. Uh, you don't want to take a, a lot of water and displace seeds by pouring it in. You want a, lot, a nice light mist. The other way that you could water, here we have some six packs with, with seeds in there and you can water into the bottom of a tray, make sure there's no holes in the tray and allow that water to seep up through the drainage holes in the six pack into the soil. Fertilize every one to two weeks. Fish emulsion is a good choice and prepare this at half the recommended rate each time. Okay, so you may notice some problems with your seedlings as they come up. These are some seedlings that experience too little light as they emerge from the soil. Um, long, spindly plants with a weak, light yellow-green color is what is associated with low light levels. So you may want to put your light closer to the plants if that's the case, if you're noticing that. Um, other things that you may notice uh, is dampening off of seedlings. This seedling has emerged and at the base of it, um, where it meets the soil, it's gotten real skinny and rotted away. Uh, that can occur with overly moist conditions or overly hot or too cool of conditions in the soil. About two weeks before you're ready to put your plants into the ground in your garden, you're gonna want to harden them off. This means taking them from being an indoor plant to an outdoor plant. You're gonna move them you're going to expose them to outdoor conditions gradually. So 15 minutes out in the shade um, to start, get them, ex get them used to colder temperatures, let them experience little bits of sunlight, wind, etc., to slowly acclimate them to the outdoors. When you're planting your transplants, you want to pick a cloudy day to plant them into the ground and you want to provide some shade from the sun if that's not possible. Your ideal seedling should be stocky, six to eight inches tall, and dark green in color. 